lecture four. It's going to be a bit of a stressful lecture in the sense that we're going to study matrix manipulations. In particular, we'll look at how rotation of a coordinate system leads to changes in the elements of the stress tensor. So let's begin. So let us first import numpy. So now let us first look at some elementary matrix operations. Uh, in particular, let us find out the transpose of a matrix. Let us find out determinant of a matrix. Let us find out the inverse of a matrix. Okay, so let us first define a matrix to work with. So let's say A equal to NP dot array and we want a 3 by 3. So there have to be three entries like this. So I've made three sets of bracket. The first set of bracket is to show that it's an entire matrix. Then we have this, this, this set of bracket, this set of bracket, and this set of bracket. So each of these three brackets stands for rows. So let me define 3, 2, 1, 5, 7, 4, and 9, 6, 8. So let us print what A is also. Okay, so A is this 3 by 3 matrix. So now let us find out the transpose of A. So let me go over here. B equal to NP dot transpose of A. Let me print what B is. So if you look at the output, in A, the first column was 359, whereas in B, the first column is, uh, the first row rather is 359. So I've successfully taken a transpose of the matrix A. Uh, there's another way of defining the transpose of a matrix. So C is equal to A dot capital D. So this is also a way of transposing the matrix A in the sense that the object A has a method transpose denoted by T. Okay. So if in fact, if we double click on A and go to the contextual help, it will show some of the attributes such as a dot data a dot d type okay uh, so apart from these attributes it also has that method of finding out the transpose okay so let us go back over here let me in fact print c to convince you that c is in fact the transpose of a okay so there is another way of uh, checking whether two matrices, uh, whether all the elements are equal. So suppose I've I've done the transpose using the two methods. One is NP dot transpose and one is A dot capital T, and I want to check whether B and C are identical. So the way to do that is, so let me just put it directly in print. So print np dot all close b comma c and it says true meaning all the elements of b are identical to the elements of c. In fact, if I do all close b comma a, it it says false because obviously b is a transpose of a. Moreover, a dot t this should show true. Okay, so this is how uh, we can make checks. So this is to check whether all the elements of B are equal to C. So even if one element is uh, not equal, uh, it, it throws false. And the reason why it's called all close. So in this case, we're using integers as inputs to the array. In case you start using floating point numbers, then precise equation precisely equating two floating point numbers is not something which is 
logical to do rather the fact that a computer has a finite representation in terms of bits so that implies that you'll always be restricted by the representation of a number okay so often 0 0.0016 and 0 0.001599 so they have to be interpreted as the same number that's why it's called as all close and in fact in the function all close you can specify the uh, the, the tolerances okay it's it's not showing it in the help but in all close you can specify the tolerance i mean we'll we'll look at it later on we'll encounter this later on as well so let us continue let us find out the determinant of a so in order to find out the determinant we must let me create a new cell so let me print out a real quick okay so in order to find out the determinant we must make use of the linal submodule of numpy so let's call it d is equal to np dot lin alg dot determinant is it called debt yeah it's just called debt a so let me print d as well so the determinant is equal to 55.00014 and you can do it by hand you can do it by hand and you will see that the determinant is actually 55 okay if you take out the determinant of this you'll find out it's not 55.00014 but it is rather 55 and this uh, this is what i just spoke about it's because of the finite accuracy and representation of a number in 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 a computer okay it's stored in bits and thus there will always be these small errors okay so let us look at a very important property of two matrices so let's see whether a c dot b the determinant of a times b is it equal to determinant of a times the determinant of b so let us look whether this uh, holds true or not so let us initialize two random matrices so a equal to np dot random dot rand int and say we want to uh, sample rand int from 1 to 10 and the size let us declare it as 3 cross 3 similarly b will be the same thing and the fact that you are calling it twice it will generate a new random array so in fact let me print both a and b so so a and b are obviously different and another uh, way another professional way to check whether it is different is this should be false and it is false so it means a and b are distinct so let us do the following let us define c as np dot dot a b so this is a way to do matrix multiplication so the way to do matrix multiplication is the row of a multiplies the first row of b and so on it is the proper matrix multiplication it is not an element wise operation it is what we have learned in school all right so let me call d as the determinant of c And let me call E as the determinant of oh, sorry. A times this. Now let me just uh, let me simply check NP dot is close. So 
if we are trying to compare to scalar floating point numbers instead of using all close we can use is close so is close is is typically used for comparing to scalars so we want to compare d and e and we give it a relative tolerance of 1e e minus 5 for example uh, let me directly print this so it says true so is close it, it gives true let me in fact print uh, so let us say LHS percentage F slash N percentage D and print RHS percentage F slash N and this will be E. Okay, so there you go. So these are the two, um, in fact, let let me increase the uh, number of digits it will print okay so in this particular case they are equal to a very large degree let me run it again okay over here look at this it is 1440.0000 whatever and in this case it is 1439.99999 but the relative error between these two numbers is less than 10 to the power minus 5 in fact let us print out what the relative error between them is and the relative error will be np.abs 1 minus d upon e so relative error is quite small in fact it's all the way and the last digit becomes 4. So because the relative error between these two numbers are quite small, for all practical purposes in our calculation, we can consider these to be equal. Okay. All right. So we have so far considered uh, the determinant. We have so far considered the transpose. Let us now proceed to find out the inverse of a matrix. So... So let me define. Uh, okay, let us define a random. I mean, we've already defined a random array. So let me print out that array. So this is the not the array, the matrix. Okay, this is the matrix A. Let us now try to find out the inverse of this matrix. So an important uh, property in order to find out the inverse is that the determinant must be non-zero. If the determinant is zero then we cannot find out the inverse so let us do a quick check whether the determinant is zero or not so let us say c equal to np dot lin alg in fact let me call it small a dot debt of a print a so a is obviously not equal to zero so in that case we can find out the, the inverse so let me call it b so np dot lin alg dot in of a let me print what b is so b is this particular matrix and uh, let us do a quick check whether a times b is equal to the identity matrix or not so uh, let me define c as np dot dot a b and let me print what c is so if you look at this it is 1.00 e0 2.77 10 to the power minus 17 minus 5.55 10 to the power minus 17 so these are as good as zero all right so uh, np dot round c comma one so np dot round means rounded to the first decimal so in that case instead of having those very small numbers appearing we round them off to one decimal place and they do come out to be one 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 zero 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 so c is an identity matrix and this helps us in verifying what we already know
this is quite a trivial task but nevertheless it instills a bit of confidence okay uh, let us do this particular check as well this a uh, theorem in matrix algebra so a inverse transpose is equal to a transpose inverse so let us see whether this is true or not so let us say lhs and it is equal to np dot lin alg dot transpose ah, so transpose is not inside lin alg it's simply outside so np dot transpose of np dot lin alg dot inf of a so this is lhs and rhs is equal to np dot lin alg dot inverse of np dot transpose of a so then let us print whether lhs and rhs are equal so here we will write np dot all close lhs comma rhs so it says true meaning uh, whatever we have claimed to be true is in fact true and these are very famous theorems in matrix algebra obviously they are true but again it's just to demonstrate how we can manipulate matrices let us print out the lhs and rhs just for good measure all right so visual inspection as well allows us to see that lhs and rhs are equal so before before proceeding let us uh, quickly save this file let me rename it to be lec04 all right so let us verify one more famous theorem in matrix algebra that multiplication of two matrices is not commutative that is a times b is not equal to b times a so uh, we have two matrices a and b already like this in fact let me redeclare a and b to be two new matrices let me copy this bit of uh, let me reuse that code all right so a and b are randomly initialized so now we need to check whether it times b is whether it is equal to b times a so let me create c equal to np dot dot a comma b and let me create d equal to np dot dot b comma a so now we want to see whether c is equal to d or not so let us just simply print uh, np dot all close c comma d and it says false quite obviously because this theorem is obviously correct so obviously the two products are different and hence the result all right so with this let us prove or uh, let us write a small function to check whether a matrix is symmetric or not so how can we do this so if a matrix is symmetric then aij will be equal to aji so if a matrix is symmetric then swapping the two indices makes no difference so let us define uh, a function called as check sim and it will take an input as an array uh, as a matrix a okay so inside this uh, we'll simply check whether the transpose of a is equal to the uh, matrix itself so it will simply return np dot is all close a and a dot t that's it 
so let me run this cell let me declare uh, an array uh, let me declare an, a matrix so let me make it 1 2 3 2 4 5 and 3 5 6 let me print uh, what a is we forgot a bracket over here so obviously by visual inspection we can see that matrix a is symmetric i mean we've made small arrays and so we can easily have a visual check whether it's true or not but when you're doing a computation which involves large arrays uh, you, you better make some kind of function like this and in fact having a function like this you can have an automatic check whether to proceed with a certain computation or not suppose you're working with stresses and you know that the stress tensor has to be symmetric so it's a good check to start off whether a stress tensor is symmetric or not all right so um let us pass a to the checker so print check sin a and it says true in fact i've mentioned this in in one of the earlier lectures as well a is just a placeholder this particular a has nothing to do with this particular a even if i declare this as uh, something like this it will hardly make a difference okay so it's just a placeholder it's it's not a variable which is accessible to the other functions it's it has a very limited local scope all right so uh, let us define the double dot product so it is defined as a double dot b and it is uh, in an index notation it is a i j b i j and this is using the einstein summation notation where on the right hand side we have i which is a repeated index and j which is a repeated index so uh, essentially it implies that this is actually equal to sum over i and j of a i j b i j so essentially it will be something which resembles a11 b11 it will be a11 b11 plus a12 b12 plus a13 b13 plus a21 b21 and so on all the way from i equal to 1 to 3 to j equal to 1 to 3 so let us uh, see how to do this and this kind of product in uh, python is called as a tensor dot product so let us have let us see what the two arrays we have already have so these are the two arrays so let us define uh, c is equal to np dot tensor dot of a comma b and let us print out the value of c so it's 169 so how do we know whether uh, this particular sum is correct or not okay so let us define sum e s equal to zero for i in np dot a range 0 comma 3 for j in np dot a range 0 comma 3 s equal to s plus a i j times b i j well uh, i've written it like this but this is also equivalent okay this is also the same thing so at the end of the computation let us print what s is so s is equal to 169 so we've uh, established what a tensor dot product is so tensor dot product contracts two tensors into a single scalar okay and uh, this kind of uh, double dot product is typically used in uh, finding out terms like viscous dissipation 
so in fluid mechanics uh, or convective heat and mass transfer or rather in heat transfer you'll find that if you write down the energy equation you end up with a viscous dissipation term which resembles uh, something like this tau ij s ij where uh, tau is the uh, stress tensor and s is the rate of deformation tensor so this is how the viscous dissipation is opt obtained and it has the same uh, tensor dot structure as we have shown over here so yet another way of uh, quickly finding out this uh, tensor dot product using vectorized uh, so we have you we've made use of two loops over here and obviously uh, in python you want to avoid using loops you want to vectorize your code you don't want to make explicit declarations of loops so let me just quickly show you how to do that so uh, simply we will first flatten all the elements of the matrix into a straight line so the way to flatten something so let me print out what a is now let me print out what the flattened version of a is np dot nd array dot flatten okay so i have essentially flattened all the elements of a so now you can imagine if we have uh, if we have an if you have these two arrays so we need to take a element wise product of these two okay we need to take an element wise product of these two and whatever we obtain using that we have to sum over all the elements so let me just show it so c equal to the product of this this times this so let me in fact print what c is for your benefit so this is what c is and now simply i need to sum over all the elements of c so the the way i can do that is np dot sum of c and it does give 169 so i've shown you a very efficient way of going about things so simply the way to do a tensor dot product would have been this so this is a vectorized way of computing the tensor dot product so instead of having these two loops we have written everything in a single line and that saves time when the matrices become really big uh, this is how you start saving time so let us now proceed uh, to so let us now proceed to find out a rotation matrix so what is a rotation matrix so consider rather the transformation matrix it should be clearer so let us consider a coordinate system x y and a vector say this is a vector a now in a rotated coordinate system such as this so let's say this is x prime and this is y prime so we have rotated this coordinate system by an angle theta so we want to so we are interested to know what are the components of a in this rotated coordinate system so let the components of a be a1 and a2 in the first coordinate system so what are a prime so a prime is a1 prime and a2 prime so geometrically this is a1 and this is a2 and this is a prime a1 prime and this is going to be a2 prime so we are interested to relate the components in the rotated coordinate system with the original coordinate system so the fact of the matter is rotation of a coordinate system should not have any bearing on the representation of a 
meaning a1 i plus a2 j should still be equal to a1 prime i prime plus a2 prime j prime when where i prime and j prime are unit vectors in the x prime and y prime direction so now let us take a dot product of everything with i prime so a1 prime is a1 i dot i prime plus a2 j dot i prime similarly a2 prime is equal to a1 i dot j prime plus a2 j dot j prime where we have made use of the fact that i prime dot j prime is equal to 0 that is i prime and j prime are orthogonal all right so what is i dot i prime i dot i prime is the angle between these this unit vector and this unit vector that is cos theta so essentially the first expression essentially <coughs> boils down to a1 prime equal to a1 cos theta plus a2 times j dot i prime so j is this direction and i prime is this direction so this cos of this angle is basically sin theta a2 prime is basically a1 i dot j prime so this is j prime and this is i so it is cos of 90 plus theta which is minus sin theta and a2 this is j and this is j prime so this angle is obviously theta so this will be cos theta because j dot j prime is cos theta so essentially we end up with a representation like this so a1 prime a2 prime on one side is equal to cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta times a1 a2 so essentially a prime vector is equal to q dot a where q is called as the transformation matrix all right so now let us encode this particular transformation matrix in python all right so we want to find out v prime okay so let us define first the theta that is the rotation of the coordinate system so theta is equal to so let us uh, declare it in terms of uh, radian directly so 30 times so we have to make it into radian because all these angles have to be in radians and not in degrees so times np dot pi divided by 180 okay so this is the angle let us define q equal to np dot array so let us do a 2d transformation uh, first so we need two such brackets so one is np dot cos of theta np dot sine of theta minus np dot sine of theta np dot cos of theta so let us uh, print out what the q uh, matrix looks like so q is the transformation matrix so print q so this is what it looks like so let us now create uh, a vector rather before uh, delving into the transformation itself uh, let us look, quickly look at some properties of the transformation matrix so uh, here are some properties uh, which are quite well known from matrix algebra i'm just pointing them out for as a refresher nothing else so the first property is the determinant of q is equal to 1 uh, second property is the transpose of q is equal to the inverse of q and the third property is 
by corollary actually q q transpose is equal to the identity matrix so let us look at these three properties one by one so let us check whether the determinant of q is one or not so um, let me define c equal to np dot lin alg dot debt of q let me print c and see the determinant of c is obviously equal to one and that is quite obvious because the determinant of this fellow over here is cos square theta minus of minus sine square theta so it is one so it is identically equal to one uh, let us check for the second identity so lhs equal to np dot transpose of q rhs is equal to np dot lin alg dot inverse of q so then let us print np dot all close lhs comma rhs and r tall equal to 1e minus 6 so it is true in fact, uh, in order to check whether this particular identity is true or not, we can make use of uh, a function called as ones or, or i's, uh, not ones, but i's. So let me define, it's called as i's in MATLAB, but in uh, NumPy it is i. So let me define i equal to np dot i. Let me print out what i is. So i is an identity matrix. So np dot i gives you a diagonal one matrix. Every other element is set to zero. So let me uh, do this directly. So print np dot all close np dot dot q comma q dot transpose. And I have to check whether this is close to i or not okay so it is in fact equal to i so this last identity we have done using the single line and oftentimes nesting these functions may not be in the best interest for readability of the code so when you write such a short code it often ends up uh, confusing the other reader so in this particular case it's not so complicated and so we can do it like this but in other case uh, it is expedient to define this as some other variable and then check this all right so now let us uh, consider uh, a having two components like this so let a be 1 comma 3 for example so find out a prime all right so the components of a prime will be equal to so a prime will be equal to np dot dot q comma a but we have not yet defined what a is so np dot uh, so a equal to np dot array so it has to have two components the first component is one or well, the second component is three okay so let us print out what the components of ap are so these are the two components of ap so the angle is 30 degree so how does this uh, look like let us let us try to draw this i mean so we have a system like this and we have rotated by 30 degree 
something close to this and the first it was 1 comma 3 no, it was something like this so it was 1 comma 3 in this coordinate system and it does look to be something equal in the other coordinate system so over here it is something 2.366 and 2.098 I mean physically it makes sense okay so let us in fact uh, do a full rotation sweep and see how the components vary I mean to say uh, in a in a loop we can vary this theta going from 0 to a certain uh, to all the way to 360 degrees and we'll try to find out what the components will be so in fact there will be a certain angle there will be a certain angle so when the coordinate system is something like this there will be no y component okay the y component is zero because the vector is aligned completely with the x prime coordinate and there will be an angle so when the coordinate system appears to be something like this something like this so this will be y prime and this will be x prime so when the coordinate system would have rotated by this particular angle we would have only a y prime component which would be non zero and x prime would be zero in fact this would occur also when this will be y prime and this will be x so when the coordinate system rotates by this angle okay try to draw this on your own and you'll see what i mean so let us do a sweep of theta and find out the two components of the tra uh, transformed vector a prime okay so let us do that so let us create uh, the theta array so theta equal to np or let me call it theta a to signify that it's it's an array so it will be np dot lin space so 0 to 2 times pi and in steps of 100 so this is theta in radians so let me create the vector v okay. uh, let us use it let us use the vector a so a equal to np dot array let me redefine it just for completeness so now we have to run in a loop so in order to store each element of the transformed vector so basically we need to have two uh, two arrays one of which 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 will store all the components of uh, a1 prime for all different thetas and one which will store all the components of a2 prime for all the different thetas so there will be 100 values of thetas as defined uh, in this lin space okay and there will be 100 values of a2 prime as well as defined by this lin space so let us create two empty arrays so it is always a good idea to initialize uh, it is always a good idea to initialize um, whatever you're going to store instead of dynamically allocating an array it is always a better idea to pre allocate it in terms of zeros so we will declare v prime 1 array is equal to np dot zeros np dot shape of theta a it means it will create a zero array which has the same shape as the theta array this is important because theta array and a1 prime uh, vp uh, I'm, I'm calling it v let me call it a so a prime one array and theta array must have the same length and hence they must have the same dimension as well okay similarly 
ap2 underscore a equal to np dot zeros np dot shape theta underscore a so this ensures that if i change the number of elements in theta a it will automatically change the number of elements in ap1 a and ap2 a so i don't have to hard code the size of ap uh, a prime 1 a and a prime 2 a okay instead of hard coding it i'm querying the size that these two arrays should be from the earlier declared array array of theta okay so now let we can uh, go in a loop so for theta in theta a so theta will pick up each element of theta a in the loop all right ap 1 a and now we have to create a counter as well because for the first loop it has to have a value of a0 uh, ap1 0 then 2 uh, 1 2 3 4 and so on till 99 so this will be count where i have to first define count outside the loop as 0 so ap1 count is equal to it will be equal to in fact let me do this ap equal to np dot dot q times a where q equal to np dot array np dot cos theta np dot sin theta np dot sin theta minus of this np dot cos theta and we have to wrap it up with a another square bracket all right so we have defined the transformation matrix a in uh, q inside the loop because theta is changing so each time theta changes the matrix q has to change as well a is defined a is not gonna change so now ap is np dot q a and now so the the first element that we will save it will be this while the second element it will be this okay remember that the element number and the index they differ by one so this is the second element but the index is one remember that this is first element but the index is zero okay so now we have stored so when count is zero we have stored it in ap1 underscore a zero and ap2 underscore underscore zero once this loop has executed till this point we need to increment the value of count so count will become count plus one all right so let us run, evaluate this entire cell and see what happens okay so now let us plot so plt so first we have to import uh, the plot functions so import mat plot lib dot my plot as plt plt dot plot ap1 underscore a and on the x-axis we will have theta okay this seems to be an error uh, so it has to be theta a because theta is just one of the many entries in theta a where theta a is the array okay all right so this is how the uh, entry how the plot of uh, ap1 a looks like in fact let us plot on top of this what theta a comma ap2 a looks like all right so it looks something like this uh, let us draw the grid 
let me set uh, x levels and y levels so now let us see uh, there there does exist an angle where the okay let me label this two as well this is just to make the legends of the plot all right so there are points where the first component that is a1 prime is maximum and that corresponds to a2 prime 0 and that happens twice similarly there are points where a1 prime is 0 over here and where a2 prime is negative minimum and positive maximum all right so the magnitude is maximum and that does correspond to these four angles that we have talked about in the in the working out of this problem so this is how you can do that in fact uh, let us draw a phase plot of a prime meaning uh, plt dot plot we will plot how a1 prime and a2 prime vary simultaneously it's like a parametric plot so theta is like the parameter but i want to plot a2 prime versus a1 prime so we will plot uh, a1 prime underscore a and a2 prime underscore a oops ah. so this is a prime one one should always be careful with the variables so it looks like a circle in fact let me make the aspect ratio of the plot uh, better so we will get first the axis so plt.gca then we will set aspect ratio to be 1 uh, yeah so the parametric plot it uh, does look like a circle in the sense that all the components lie on this particular circle so if i if i select this particular point all right so it corresponds to some some angle theta in fact let me superpose on top of this the original components so the original components were this okay so let me superpose that particular point as well so plt dot plot so this will be a0 comma a1 and uh, let me put a circle black colored circle over there so this is the point where we have started the original vector and as you rotate it you will change the components a1 prime and a2 prime in accordance to this particular circle okay once you rotate by a certain angle you will reach this particular point and these the projections will be the components of a1 prime and a2 prime okay this is what it means so now once we're done with this we are ready to move into transforming stress okay so now let me just mention how a matrix transformation looks like so if we have a matrix sigma so the components of sigma prime will be q times sigma times q transpose so this is how the transformation of a matrix looks like and so in its rawest form this will be equal to so yeah it will be equal to this so let us uh, do this let us so let me define uh, a matrix s is equal to
so let me define it as 50 comma 30 and 30 comma minus 20 so typically the tensors so there's a difference between a tensor and a matrix but this is not the course to discuss about that but typically it is symmetric so let us print out what s is so s is this matrix okay so let me remove this print let me define what theta will be so theta will be say some rotation by 30 degrees so the coordinate system rotates by an angle 30 so 30 times pi times 180 by uh, upon 180 yeah. so the q the, the transformation matrix will be np dot array in fact let me copy it from above so now with the help of this we can find out the transformed entity so sp let the transformed matrix be sp so it will be np dot dot and this will be np dot dot again this will be q comma s and this will be q transpose so let us print out s and let us print out sp so those are the transformed elements of the matrix s when the coordinate system is rotated by an angle 30 okay in fact let us do the same procedure over here let us try to loop over all the thetas and find out how the components change all right so let us reuse this bit of program and let us try to convert this into a loop so theta first of all we have to declare as a as an array and let us define it till only 180 degree and it will be clear why that is the case oh, sorry Okay, in order to save the different components of the transformed matrix, let us declare a few more arrays. So let us define sigma n array is equal to np dot zeros np dot shape of theta a and let us define tau n a equal to np dot zeros np dot shape theta a okay and again we can do the same thing we can dictate declare everything inside a loop for theta in theta a so now we must indent these lines because these have to be executed inside a loop and we must have a loop counter as well so count equal to zero so now let us set sigma n a count as sp zero comma zero that is this particular element we are declaring as sigma n these elements we are declaring as tau n so these are uh, some of the notations uh, that solid mechanics uh, that appear in solid mechanics so all right so So let us uh, 
yeah before this we have to increment count as well so one way of doing this is count plus equal to one so this is equivalent to writing count equal to count plus one okay so this is an equivalent way of writing it so let us execute this and see whether so there's no error so great we can now plot sigma n a as a function of tau n a let me make the aspect ratio so it does look like a circle but can we show it can we prove that it, it does actually have to be a circle and the circle is not centered at about, about uh, 0 comma 0 it's centered about some other value so what is that value okay so let us quickly simplify whatever we were doing over here so let me simplify whatever this is so let us simplify this so instead of cos theta and sin theta i'm just gonna write c and s so this will be c sigma 1 1 plus s sigma 2 1 c sigma 1 2 plus s sigma 2 2 minus s sigma 1 1 plus c sigma 2 1 minus s sigma 1 2 plus c sigma 2 2 this times c minus s s c all right so this will be equal to so this multiplies this so c square sigma 1 1 plus c s sigma 2 1 plus c square sigma 1 2 uh, rather c s sigma 1 2 plus s square sigma 2 2 so this is the first element okay uh, so then the second element will be this times this plus this times this so it will be minus c s sigma 1 1 minus s square sigma 2 1 plus c square sigma 1 2 plus cs sigma 2 2 and this will be minus cs sigma 1 1 plus c square sigma 2 1 minus s square sigma 1 2 plus cs sigma 2 2 and this will be this times this so it will be s square sigma 1 1 minus cs sigma 2 1 plus s square sigma 1 2 plus c square sigma 2 2 so these are the components and so sigma n prime that we have written is essentially c square sigma 1 1 plus s square sigma 2 2 plus sigma 2 1 and sigma 1 2 are equal so this become because we have selected the sigma to be symmetric so this is 2 cs sigma 2 1 tau n prime is equal to this term so this is so sigma 2 1 we are equal all right so this is c square minus s square of sigma 2 1 plus cs sigma 2 2 minus sigma 1 1 and if you note that this element is also equal to this okay it's sigma 2 2 cs minus sigma 1 1 so it checks out so it's symmetric as well the transform matrix is symmetric as well while if i call this as sigma y prime this comes out to be s square sigma 1 1 plus c square sigma 2 2 So obviously we have made a small mistake. 
so this should have been this times this so this should have been minus cs okay so this is minus 2 cs sigma 2 1 so one thing to note from this is that if you add these two sigma n prime plus sigma y prime so this becomes sigma 1 1 because cos square plus sin square is 1 plus sigma 2 2 because cos square plus sin square is equal to 1 these two terms cancel out while tau n prime is equal to c square minus s square times sigma 2 1 plus cs sigma 2 2 minus sigma 1 1 okay but if we just focus on this sigma n prime so sigma n prime is equal to c square sigma 1 1 plus s square sigma 2 2 plus 2 cs sigma 2 1 while tau n prime is equal to c square minus s so cos square theta minus sin square theta is cos 2 theta so we can write this as cos 2 theta sigma 2 1 and plus 2 not 2 so this this will be half so half sin 2 theta times sigma 2 2 minus sigma 1 1 while this uh, can be written as cos square sigma 1 1 plus uh, cos square theta sigma 1 1 plus sin square theta sigma 2 2 plus sin 2 theta sigma 2 1 so keeping this in mind we can further simplify everything and we can show that sigma x uh, rather sigma n prime minus sigma y prime upon 2 whole square okay plus tau n prime whole square is equal to sigma x minus uh, not sigma x but sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 upon 2 whole square plus tau square this can be shown using these expressions and with the help of this we can finally write down an expression like this uh, sigma n prime so let us add and subtract sigma n prime so if we if we add and subtract over here so this becomes 2 sigma n prime minus sigma n prime minus plus sigma y prime upon 2 whole square plus tau n prime whole square is equal to sigma 1 1 minus sigma 2 2 upon 2 whole square plus tau square and this essentially means sigma n prime minus sigma n prime plus sigma y prime by 2 this whole square plus tau n prime whole square is equal to whatever this is and this implies and this particular earlier result when we combine so this implies that sigma n prime minus sigma average or rather this is the this is half the trace okay so this is half the trace of sigma this whole square plus tau n prime whole square is equal to if if we call this as r square okay this is equal to r square so it's clear that the locus or rather the curve in the sigma n prime tau n prime plane will be a circle whose center is at this point that is the sigma average that is sigma n prime plus sigma y prime by 2 and i call it the average because sigma n prime plus sigma y prime upon 2 is by this particular result also equal to sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 by 2 hence i have written it as the trace of sigma upon 2 because the trace 
is simply the sum of diagonals and the radius of this circle is equal to this entity okay so let us verify whether that is true let us verify whether that is true so on top of this plot let me plot the center of the circle plt dot plot so let me so the x x point will be half of the trace so np dot trace of s divided by 2 comma 0 and let me mark it by a black point oh, sorry okay so this is indeed the center and that is simply the trace of s and we don't need the transform matrix to find out the location of the center okay so and the radius of this circle you can independently verify that it will be equal to this equation over here and this particular construction is called as the Mohr circle okay and it helps us in identifying which will be the coordinate system in which we will experience maximum shear stress or the maximum normal stress so on the x-axis we have essentially the maximum uh, another the transform normal stress on the y-axis we have the maximum uh, shear stress okay so let me label this so the x level will be equal to sigma n prime while the we have to put a double escape character over here and plt dot y level will be equal to tau n prime okay so this helps us in identifying the locations of the maximum uh, shear stress and normal stress and I request you to have a look at basic solid mechanics and try to figure out all this on your own. There will be a number of problems where you are required to find out the plane where the maximum stress occurs and try to resolve it using Python. I have shown you how to do it. So uh, this pretty much wraps up this particular lecture. And in this lecture we have covered a whole lot of matrix manipulations and I have shown you how it can be used to your advantage to understand matrix transformations and vector transformations this is different from vector rotations where you are rotating a vector here we are rotating coordinate systems and in your free time i request you to have a look into rotation of vectors and rotation of matrices not just the transformations with this it's goodbye from me i'll see you again next time bye